a refugee voice, amplifying the voices of the unheard and telling the untold refugee stories. Welcome to the Her Voice podcast, a podcast initiated by the Refugee Voice to discuss about women in innovation, leadership, health, education, business, etc. And today I am in Zone 3 BDBD Refugee Settlement to host one of the refugee-led uh, leader, none other than uh, Dawa Jane, who is the executive director and founder of Women Concern in Zone 3. Women Concern is a women-led organization uh, located in Zone 3, BDBD Refugee Settlement in Uganda. And in Women's Center, they are really very innovative with the activities they do to support the refugee and the host community in Zone 3. And as I will not go further to introduce her, I will say you're welcome, Dawa Jane. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Dawa Jane Lasuba. A uh, pound of women concern and idea uh, is a women-led organization based in me, uh, BDBD Settlement Zone Three. Yes, thank you, uh, Dawa. How did you come and find yourself here at the refugee settlement in BDBD? Actually, how did you come? When did you come here? Uh, okay, thank you so much. I I became a refugee in 2016. That was in September. Uh, we started our, our, our journey from Morobo County. Uh, that, that was on date 14 at September. And we reached to the border on 15 at uh, September. That was Busia. On our way coming from South Sudan to Uganda, we really got a lot of challenges. Uh, me as a woman, I got a lot of challenges. I, I was emotionally tortured. Uh, my my uh, my people, my loved ones, I, I lost them on the way. Uh, people were being killed. Uh, rape cases uh, happening. Uh, I got a lot of challenges when I was coming to Uganda. And uh, here in Uganda, uh, that was in uh, 16th of September 2016, uh, we were received by uh, the, the partners. Uh, that was IRC, UNCR, and ETC. Uh, in that time, we got the support, and uh, I, as a woman, that time, I, r I, I really, I, I, I was really emotionally tortured. I, I was by, yeah, I, I was violated, and I, I thought that, that, yeah, and I thought that was the end of everything in my life. But uh, reaching to certain time, October 2016. Uh, I, I started learning new things in Uganda uh, where I received the past eight of trauma healing. Then I gained myself. Then from there, I became a volunteer for, for IRSC, WFE, uh, uh, under GBB. So my contract ended. And be and because of the experience and I, I got and the challenge I got, I saw the same things happening again in Uganda. Women are, uh, we yeah, women are being violated. Their their rights are being violated. The the same things that I went through, my fellow women are also going through. And I decided, uh to form women concern and idea it, it it yeah it it was just a group that time i formed as a group small one and then in reaching to 20 uh 2020 that was when i registered it to be a women led organization in bdbd settlement and the uh the activities we do uh we do uh, our how to reach uh under the topic gbb we were preventing women from GBB, and then also uh, that time uh, there, yeah. And then also there was a high a rate of teenage, how do I call teenage pregnancy? Yes. So, which 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 has given me, uh, I felt it very bad to me. That's why I brought that uh, that the, the project of sexual reproductive health uh, to adolescents and women in it. Zone three. Thank you so much. Wow, if you are to hear the story she has been narrating starting from when she started her journey back home in South Sudan and 
coming to the refugee settlement in Uganda, she faced a lot of challenges, which include uh, uh, psychological torture and trauma, which she underwent uh, healing for a process. And after going healing and getting opportunity to serve in uh, volunteering in the GBV uh, work, she has to acquire knowledge and decided to form her own organization that also initiated those same program to support fellow women in the refugee settlement. This is really something amazing uh, to see a refugee woman rising up to come up with such beautiful initiative. But uh, really it is very uh, interesting to know from you uh, how is the leadership, like because we have seen that ma no many women are uh, in the leadership position in most organizations. Most of them uh, are just working as an employee, but they are not as a founder. How did you come up with that idea? What motivated you much to see that really I have to stand for these women? Or what is that thing that gave you the courage to form an organization? OK, thank you so much. Um, what motivated me to form Women Concern an idea? Uh, it's one leadership uh, I know if I stand as the founder and it is me who have the idea meaning I have authority and I will bring more women on board that is why I went ahead and formed Women Concern as a women led organization and uh, yeah and, and, and then also I, I came to, to yeah, and then also I came to realize that women are not much in leadership. When you look around Zone 3, you will not see more women in leadership. Women are only given position of being a vice. And when you're a vice, the leader, uh, the chairperson tends to take every activities and you as a woman when you come up and say this is not supposed to be like that you are not recognized not knowing not not knowing that it is good to involve the women in every activities uh, for the success of of the refugees and the host communities here in BDBD settlement and I came to understood that the type of the leader I am uh, it is uh, my leadership skill is uh, it is a transformation uh, transformation yeah transformation leader. Uh, I came to realize that I I I really feel good when I when I inspire others. That was how I came to understood my leadership skill, and it has given me that courage. I am able to speak to my fellow women. And whatsoever, uh, yes, I am able to speak to my fellow women and they know their rights, that it is good for them also to speak up. Uh, yeah, even in their businesses, they have rights. Yeah. Thank you for that narrative. And uh, as to my notice, women concern have taken up to uh, maintain uh, climate uh, change. Uh, they are doing recycling of waste, and that is really a good, innovative work. How did you come with the idea of innovation? And I am really seeing it is something which is really very good. And out of that uh, recycle, you people are producing good products which can be sold, and others you are supporting the refugees uh, with. And how did you come with that idea, and how is the community embracing it? Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, the, it was, yeah, yeah this, the idea came. Uh, when we came to Uganda, the environment was fertile. Yes, the soil was fertile. Uh, the small thing you cultivate, you will get it well. But reaching to to certain time, we realize that the that there is a environment there is environmental degradation. Uh, reason being, the plastics that the that that people are bringing, most special partners, whenever they are coming to conduct their activities, uh, they are refreshments, yes. And then those those bottles, uh, not knowing that the bottles can harm the environment, so this, this yeah, so these bottles are just thrown anyhow, and we came to realize that this is the cost 
uh, of the, 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 the environmental degradation. Because the rain, if the rain comes, it just ends on top. So down, downwards, there is no water. So we came, uh, we, we came with that idea. That time it got me when I was sleeping. So I came up with that idea that let me pass do recharge. So I went ahead. I collected small portion of the plastics around. And then I also dug that place. And I put some seeds. I, I want to see whether it will it will be okay. So the time I did that, it uh, it germinated well, and the, and the crops was okay. So I realized that the cause of the environmental degradation or the soil in, in infertility it is because of the plastic waste that 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 that, that, that yeah that, that 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 have been thrown down. That is why. Uh, that is why uh, our crops are, are not what yielding. So uh, we we came with that idea, and then then from there we started collecting the plastics. We engaged these youths within the community, women, even yeah, everyone collect the plastics. We buy from them. We buy yeah, we buy, uh, and then now we recycle them into reusable products. Uh, this these products are we have cups. I did not carry the, the samples. Uh, we have cups, we have beads, uh, we have rulers, and the pegs. The pegs can be used for hanging clothes. Yeah. So, uh, we also give it to to the, the needy. Yeah. Women who cannot afford, most special women who are above, uh, above, above, uh, above, uh, above. The one above 70 or 60, we, 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 we give them those packs for free. Provide if, if they are taking care of school going children, we give them for free. And then at the same time also we sell uh, this, yeah, we, we sell them. And in the market, people are really liking it. Uh, we have customers. And it is also exposing us to other parts of BDBD settlement. Yeah, that's a very amazing innovation uh, done by refugee and refugee women leading it. I think it is really a amazing uh, innovation that we are getting from refugee themselves and the refugee women who are leading it. And uh, we still call really more uh, partners to support such kind of inno innovation. And maybe to ask you, I don't know... Uh, in the marketing of your product or the innovation, the, I, the things you recycle and produce out of those waste, do you really have external uh, market out of BDBD, uh, like in uh, Koboko or Yumbe Town, Arua? Do you really have those markets? No. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What is the challenge making you you don't have those markets? Yeah, uh, the challenge I, I have seen, we have challenge in the linkage. Yeah. Uh, since we are here in BDBD as women and uh, we don't know other parts, yeah, that is the one challenge that I have seen. Uh, and uh, to solve that, if maybe a partner uh, comes and uh, maybe make us for exposure visit, where we are taken to other site also to learn other things there or take our things also there to, 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 yeah, to, to showcase our product. Okay, thank you so much. You who is watching, as they are saying, these are innovative uh, ideas created by women concerned and by led by women and done by women who are really producing innovative uh, products like carbs, beads, and pegs. And they are really looking for support or they are looking for market to market their products, which means that they need really more exposure outside BDBD settlement. I think the partners are required here to do more work and to come and expose such kind of innovative work done by women in the settlement. This is really very amazing. Yes, Dawa Jane, I would like really to ask you one question, which is almost the last question, concerning as a woman who is a, a, a leading and a, co a founder of an organization in the refugee settlement, as we see many of our women are withdrawing out from leadership position or participating in a community leading some uh, activities what advice will you give to those who are aspiring 
or those who are young still growing and those who are already there in terms of business and leadership, what are you trying to give them? What should they do so that they can become also a leader like you with innovative ideas? Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Uh, I think what I can say uh, to, to my fellow women who are outside there, uh, being, being a leader, it has a lot of issues. But the only thing you have to know that you're being called for that position. And you should not fear, uh, fear rejection. Yeah, you should not fear re rejection. I know what uh, what I've seen that skilling women in leadership, they fear rejection. They thought if they come out with I with the, if they come out with this idea, they will be rejected. So I am standing here by saying no. Come out with your idea. I know women have brilliant ideas. If you look around, if you look around, uh, women are everything. Right now, they are responsible for their families. They are responsible of taking care of children. They are responsible of everything. So meaning, so meaning they can do anything. So I am standing saying here that we, sh we should not give up. Being a leader, it is not easy. You accept mistakes. You have to learn from others. Uh, being a leader, uh, being a leader, you have to create that condition environment within, within your organization or within your business. Uh, if it's time for work, it should be time for work. Not, 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 not yeah, yeah, not, not for joke. Uh, we should use, we should be objectives. Anything you wanted to do, you have to know the, 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 the goal and the mission. It is good to set your goal and the mission. If you have these two things, my dear sisters, you can be someone. And you have to accept change. Uh, if you go to churches, uh, there are a lot of preachings. But... There is, there is a pre a one preacher, maybe one preacher in all the church. There is one thing that person will preach about and it will change your life. So we need to accept change and we have to know that we are being called to serve or else to be a leader in that position. And it is good to inspire others. If you do that, your generation, even your own children, they will not suffer. Because, because they will say, eh, it is so and so who taught me A, B, C, D. That is why today I am like this. And uh, being a leader, you have to know, today, at around 6 or 5, you have to know your, your work plan. Today I am going to do A, B, C, D. We should not waste time. If you waste your time, you cannot recover your time. You have to know that today I am going to do A, B, C, D, and you have to weigh which one is good. You see? Which one is perfect? Which one comes past? Don't just do things poor because, because you are given a tax that you have to perform. No. Evaluate before you, before you act. So I am saying, let's arise we still have time to change our lives. We still have time to change the mindset of our community. So the mindset of, of, of uh, okay, the change of our community depends on you as a woman in the leadership. We should not fear being as maybe a vice. We should not fear being maybe as a woman. I am married. I should not do A, B, C, D. Be strong. Come out, arise, be confident of yourself. Don't fear, re re don't fear rejection. And uh, to our colleagues who are who are right now, maybe we are looking or maybe hearing whatever we are saying, let's come up and support women. When we put when we put our money or maybe the support to women, you can see the fruits. Women are good in accountability. 
women cannot use things anyhow without uh, accounting for it. So I stand here by saying women are capable of doing what a man is supposed to do. Yeah, thank you so much. As to summarize, one is she's trying to tell us the young girls, the women who already who are there, let us have not fear to take position in leadership. Let us embrace the position and we also accept to learn so that we can continue uh, leading in those kind of positions. Mean that a woman can do what any other person can do, even if a man. And uh, to the young ones, for you to become into those positions, let us embrace education is the first thing. Go to school, attain your school and graduate so that you can come and lead uh, the what? Uh, your organization, your community, or an initiative in your community that can transform uh, that community and majorly can transform the women who are living in the community. And maybe something to ask right now as the last one before we conclude our discussion. I would like to know, as a refugee uh, here in Uganda and also an executive director and founder of a refugee-led organization, what information are you interested to tell or requesting the partners to do to support women and women-led organization in the refugee settlement and also in Uganda at large? Okay. Uh, I think I forgot something. I, I don't know how it is going to be. Yeah. Uh, should I go yeah. back? You can talk, people. Can, can go. Okay. Uh, there is one thing I've, I have. Yeah. There is one thing I've, I have. I have. I have seen. Uh, women. Uh, women fear that they are not educated. Yes. But there is still chance. There is still chance for you as a woman to go back to school, and you finish your school. I came to Uganda when I was all level liver, and from there. I started doing short course and the short course of three months took me to do to do my certificate. And the, from there I, I did logistic and the, the procurement. So I saw there is there is more still I have to do. I went ahead and enrolled for social work and social ad administration because I want to work with the community. I want to work with the people. That is why I went back and enrolled for social work and this. Yes. So you can start from zero and you will reach wherever you wanted to to reach. So as a ED, as a ED, the diploma I have right now, it is still not enough. I am thinking it's still not enough for me. I have to enroll again. You see? So meaning you can go slow by slow. So let's enroll back for studies. And uh, what I have, I wanted to say to the people outside there. As I've said, women are capable of doing things. Everything women are capable of doing it. Uh, I am requesting uh, uh, partners or friends uh, or people who wanted to, to, to support, just, uh, just wholehearted, they want to support women. Uh, we we in zone three we really need support or here in bdbd as a women-led organizations we have challenges that we are going through we wanted to do more activities but their lack of their lack of uh, funds that is hindering us not to fulfill our mission uh so i am calling for us for a support for the partners to support women-led organizations uh, or women in the leadership, women in the business, for them to, to support us so that we can fulfill uh, what we wanted to do, uh, to support our community, to change our backgrounds. Uh, maybe, yeah, that is what I can say. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, uh, Dawa Jane, the executive director and founder of Women Concern and Ideas, an organization, a uh, refugee led organization which is based here in Zone 3. And this one has brought us to our end of our discussion here at the Her Voice podcast, an initiative uh, brought by the Refugee Voice to discuss about women in leadership, business innovation, uh, health, education. ETC, 
At Her Voice, we give women platform to share their experience and challenges as we keep on discussing here. Thank you.